everybody. Thanks for watching this tutorial about how to paint a Victorian home in watercolor. Victorian homes are really cool to do. They have so many neat details and so many interesting aspects uh, that I wanted to share this one with you. It's a home in Rhode Island that I was commissioned to do. A large part of my watercolor business consists of doing home portraits. Um, so I wanted to share this with you so you could see uh, just a way to make a little money with your with your watercolor work if you want to get into doing home portraits it's a great way to do some some business with your art I'm going to show you a few examples of some watercolor pictures I did and then I'm going to show you my painting process for doing this particular watercolor home so if you like this video I hope you'll subscribe and please give me a thumbs up uh, let me know any comments you have or any questions and I'll get back with you thanks again for tuning in and let's get going I wanted to start this video by showing you some watercolor house portraits that I've already done. Um, you can just see there's a lot of variety in the types of homes that you do. And I think that is what makes these really fun and interesting. As an artist, I'm never doing the same thing twice. I'm being challenged with different ways with every home portrait I do. There are certain aspects that I've had to get really good in. For example, painting brick or painting trees and greenery, but the houses are, are all pretty much unique and each one is enjoyable to paint in its own way. And I like doing them because they're very meaningful to the people who will get them. So that being said, here's the drawing of the house that I'm gonna be doing today. See, it's a Victorian home with lots of detail. This drawing is probably a little darker than I usually make them, but I wanted to do it that way so you could see everything at home really easily. And here's the photo that I'll be working from this gorgeous home. It's really so fun. I think it's gonna be really cool to do all those details. And the first thing I always do after I draw a house is I compare my drawing with the photo to see what I've forgotten to do. Typically, when I'm doing a house portrait for somebody else, I will um, trace the, the house using graphite paper. I'll print out a photo of the paper, put the graphite paper under the photo, and then trace it because I want it to be absolutely accurate. And in doing that, sometimes you'll miss something. And I see in this, I have missed the chimney. So I'm gonna draw the chimney in there myself, and then we will get to work. Okay, there we go. I have already stretched my watercolor paper. I have a different video that I'll attach to this on how to stretch your watercolor paper. I'll also connect to a video I have that shows how to make your own graphite paper and trace a picture for a watercolor. Um, some of you might be a little offended at that and think, oh, why didn't you draw it out freehand? And the answer is time. When I'm doing these for commissions, the sooner I get one done, the more of them I have time to do, and therefore you you make more money. I save my freehand drawing of how the houses for when I'm doing urban sketching for my own enjoyment. So it's not that I never freehand them, I just don't freehand them for this particular purpose. All right, so as I said, I've stretched my watercolor paper, I've stapled it down, and the first thing I always do is I get some tape, I like to use colored washi tape, or you can use painter's tape. And I tape the edges so the painting will have a nice clean line around the edge. It just makes it look a little more professional and nicer. I didn't always do this, but once I started doing it, I, I really think it, it makes things look better. Actually, any painting that you do, if you just tape off the edge and do it, it just improves it, I, it's like magic. So I encourage you to tape off the edges of any painting you're gonna do in your sketchbook or, or anywhere. It's very helpful. Now that I have it taped down, I wanna make sure of course that I have all my supplies ready to go. You're gonna need a big, uh, glass of water or two smaller things of water. 
I always have brush cleaner handy. Um, I find the green really sticks to my brushes when I'm doing greenery and I like to clean them out sometimes between colors to make sure my colors stay really clear. Of course, you're going to want your paints. This is a nice little set that I love that I just realized you can pull this out and you have more palette room. So that's what I've done. I already mentioned the tape. You're also going to need brushes of various sizes. These are the brushes I use all the time. I'll link to them. They were inexpensive and I got them from Amazon. You'll probably want to have a nib pen to do details with. I also sometimes use a gel pen, a white gel pen, and a ruler, a ruler that has foam or um, a cork on the back to lift it off the paper. So if I am painting along a straight line, the paint doesn't leach underneath the ruler and mess up the rest of the picture. Right. So once you have all that stuff together, you're ready to go. The type of sky I typically like to do in a home portrait is very loose, fluffy clouds. Um, I tend to do a sunny sky with a few clouds in it and all of them, unless it's requested by the client that I do something different, or sometimes there are just some very striking clouds in the original picture that I want to copy. So this is your 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 background, of course. You see in the original photo, the sky is just there's not much to it. It's this photo is a little washed out, so I'm going to make the sky a little more blue, but keep these fluffy clouds. All right, so I'm going to wet the whole background area first. It's just a, a wash of clear water, and I'm going to be careful to cut in around my uh, drawing of the house. The color I typically like to use for the sky is um, cerulean. I have Windsor Newton cerulean blue, and I add a touch of Daniel Smith manganese blue just to make it a little brighter. I think that cerulean can sometimes go a little gray. Got it on my brush, and now I'm just gonna gently dab where I want some very loose clouds. You've got to remember, your clouds are all gonna go in the same direction. The closer you get to the horizon, the smaller and closer together your clouds are gonna be. I'm gonna keep this uh, paper towel close so you can blot off extra paint when you want to and just let the paint sort of flow where it's going to go. I frequently like to bring the blue right down around the house and make the clouds maybe a little higher because I find that that uh, contrast of the blue sky with the house really helps um, helps bring out the house rather than having a cloud on this edge. I like the blue on that edge. It's just my personal preference. All right, so I made my clouds going sort of at an angle. I'm going to keep that angle up. There we go. Okay, there's my sky. I'm going to let that dry. I frequently dry things with a hair dryer just to get them done more quickly, and then we'll move on. Now I'm gonna take a look at my picture again. I'm looking at the shadows. This is really pretty complicated. And in order to make a little more sense out of all the little parts of this picture, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is put in shadows where I see them. My shadow color is typically, um, permanent carmine, uh, French ultramarine, and yellow ochre mixed together. It's my shadow color for everything. So I'm gonna do that just to give some shape and definition to different areas of the house to help guide me as I put in the ground color of the house, the reds and the yellows.
Okay, I finished my basic first wash of shading on the house. You can see I use my permanent carmine, ultramarine blue, and yellow ochre mixture. Anywhere I wanted it to be really darker, I used more ultramarine blue and permanent carmine. I still did have the yellow ochre in there as well, though. And then anywhere where I wanted to show more reflected light or a lighter shadow, I added more of the yellow ochre. And I think it really makes for a nice variation in shadows. So now I'm going to go in and I'll paint the base color of the house. I'll probably have to come in and strengthen these shadows later, but they are certainly helping me um, in sort of mapping where I am when I'm painting the different parts of this house. Okay, true confessions here. I've been a little distracted and I've painted over several areas that were going to be, this line right here should be gray, this should be yellow, I'm a little irritated with myself. Um, so I am going to get an, uh, stiff, a little stiffer brush. It's not really rough. It's just a little stiffer. It's an oil painting brush. Dampen it. And then I'm going to put water on here. I should be able to lift a lot of this paint color. I don't think I'll be able to lift it all because the colors I'm using are staining. That means that uh, they stain and they're harder to get off the paper. Some colors are more staining than others, but I'll just do the best I can and make it better at least. It won't be perfect, but it will be better. Okay, looking at my painting and comparing it to the photo, I have decided that this is too red. There's more purple in this. So I'm going to do a very light wash of purple over top of the red. It's gonna be super, super pale and hopefully we'll just give a hint of color to it and make the colors match a little better. Let's hope. Okay, now I'm gonna start on the windows. I've just started. The windows in the front are very reflective. You can see the reflecting the sky, they're very light, while the windows on the side are much darker. You can actually see inside with some of them. So I'm gonna show that in my painting by making the ones in the front. I've made the sky blue. I'm gonna make the ones in the front blue, like the sky, and the ones on the side, I'm gonna experiment with some darker colors and maybe some, some greens where it looks like they're reflecting the grass or some trees that are nearby.
want to do the little decorative trim underneath these windows. And to do that, I'm going to need a really fine line. So I'm going to use my uh, ink pen to do that. I'm going to get the color I want on my brush and then wipe it. Then wipe it onto the pen so it's filled the pen. Test it out. Oops, see, I'm going to have a drip. I don't want to have a drip. Now I'm going to put dark in some of these windows and just keep the color theme together. I've made a dark using green, um, ultramarine blue, and the um, pearly and maroon, which are the other colors I've used. That way I'm not introducing some other totally new colors into a painting that already has a color scheme established. Okay, at this point, I am not liking how this is going at all. Uh, I'm going to have to think on how to rescue these windows. And um, yeah, just pull this thing together. I think I'm just at that awkward point where you've filled everything in and we haven't done enough work to really make your painting come together. So hopefully that is what is gonna come next in this painting. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to sort of strengthen where the window panes are, the the uh, bars on the windows. See if that helps give them a little more definition. I'm gonna do it once again with my ink pen, which I have a little more control over. I've also decided these windows are too dark. I'm gonna lighten them up, and I think that will help things as well. All right, let's see how this, if this helps or hurts the situation. pleased with how this is turning out. Now I'm going to bring in another medium. I know in the beginning I gave you a list of things you would need, but I am adding to this particular pen here a colored pencil. I think I am going to indicate the marks on the boards and the marks on the roof, the, the tiles and the clabbered siding with pencil rather than with watercolor because this is a small painting, five by seven. I've already struggled a little bit with how tiny so many of the details are. I think a little colored pencil will go a long way in helping with the detail. 
So I'm gonna give it a try. I've also noticed some white around the edges of the interiors of these windows. I think it'll help define them. So I'm gonna use my white gel pen to help with that. Now I'm much happier with the house. I think I salvaged it. So I am now going to go on and start working on the foreground and these houses to either side of, of the Victorian home. So what I'm doing now is I am trying to fix another little error by using my um, oil paint brush with the stiff bristles. And I'm lifting this green, it's right here, that I'd made the grass. I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to make that look a little more like sidewalk there. So this is the curb and then the sidewalk above it needs to continue over here and I didn't leave space for that. So um, just showing how you can erase watercolors and you can fix your mistakes. It's another little mistake that I'm going to fix are these little dots where watercolor got flung. I know it's got some green on it. Got to really rinse it out in clean water. Erase those. Okay. A little bit up there. We'll lift that and it'll just look like it's part of a cloud. All right. Now in the, the photo, there are some little sprigs of flowers coming up from here that I'd like to include. So to make those, I, I didn't use masking fluid to mask out areas. That would have been one way to leave clear spaces for the flowers. The masking fluid would keep the paint from adhering to the paper. I'd rub it off and then there'd be white paper underneath of it and I could have added those flowers. Instead, I'm going for a little bit of a different method. I'm using the white watercolor that I used earlier. I'm gonna put some very light green with it. White is uh, more of an opaque color. These flower sprigs look practically white on the photo. I'm just gonna add a little bit of green uh, to that white and add the sprigs with my with my ink pen. I've just put the, the ink on there, the light green. Uh, and let's give it a try. Okay, and I think that I am, I'm done for now. I'm pleased with how it turned out. Were there things I wish had gone better? Absolutely, but um, I think it's a, a good portrait and I hope that you've learned something from watching me do it. You've probably learned that a lot of what I do is trial and error. I try something out and if it doesn't work, we go on to something else. People say watercolor isn't forgiving. I think it's fairly forgiving so long as you know how to gently remove it from the paper. And um, yeah, I really like this outfit. I think it's very cool. And um, I wanna thank you for watching. Uh, I hope again, if you like this video, you'll subscribe to my channel and you'll give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much. Bye.